In a schoolroom on a distant planet, a young student named Jory L is going to demonstrate his science project to the class. His project is a live, miniature, fully functioning planet. We take you now to the classroom. Welcome to my science class demonstration. I have created a miniature planet and I have it in a box. I call my creation Planet Earth. I have run this planet for three months. In Earth time, that is equal to about 4 billion years. I will now show you the history of my planet Earth. My chronicle of the planet will be delivered for you by my Android assistant, who will open the box and show you the planet while he tells you the story of it. Hello. My name is Basil. I am showing you a miniature planet that Joriel calls Earth. It began as a peaceful place, with just a few people and animals, but as it grew, it became a turbulent pest hole, with one disaster after another. The first crisis was the plague. It came from nowhere. Perhaps carried on the wind. Or perhaps, it was carried by rats, from filthy, stinking, sailing ships. Or perhaps it arrived, on the spiny, clawed feet of flying creatures, who contaminated the fields of wheat. Though the source of the plague is not certain, the results were certainly devastating. It may have begun when a fleet of ships arrived at trading ports in Europe, in England, France, and Italy. Most of the sailors from the ships were already dead when the vessels docked. Those that were still alive, were as skinny as a straw, and were covered in ugly, bulging, bloody boils. The plague was majestically contagious, spreading quickly and infecting nearly every single person. Most of those who got it, died a lingering and agonizing death. The plague did not discriminate in the selection of its victims. It struck humans and animals alike. As it raged on, more than 90% of the people caught it, and most of them died. More than 90% of the sheep, the chickens, and the cows, caught the plague and more than 90% of them died. The end of the plague did not come quickly. But, after a year, it began to slow down, and it seemed like it was over. Yet, over the next decade, it would occasionally rear its noxious head, and continue to reduce the already decimated population of people and animals. You might assume that the plague was the worst possible threat to the inhabitants of Earth. If you do assume that, you are wrong. The worst possible threat to man, is man, himself. For man, is a maker of war. Yes, man, is a bloodthirsty war maker. In the entire history of this earth, there has never been a period of peace that lasted for more than a few years. There is almost always a war, going on somewhere. Mankind simply does not have the ability, or the desire, to live peacefully and productively. Mankind thrives on warfare even though it threatens the very existence of the species. Yes, mankind continues making war even though it threatens the very existence of the species. The proof of this is in the numbers. Over the course of this world's history, more than 107 billion people have perished as a result of wars. Yes, 107 billion people have died from wars. And, how many people do you think there are, living on this miniature planet today? That number is roughly 7 billion. That's 100 billion less, than the number killed. With the increasing threat from nuclear weapons, mankind now, has the capability of having a war, that could entirely wipe out the human race. If this human race, were to be put on trial, by a court composed of sentient and peaceful creatures from another planet, what would be the verdict? You might suspect that the planetary court would decide that Earth is guilty, and needs to be eliminated. Ah. You would be wrong, 
because I said that the court would be made up of peaceful and sentient creatures, who would probably give Earth a second chance, possibly. As for me, I am an android, and I operate from a database of logic. It is not logical to allow a self-destructive race, to continue in existence. If it were up to me, I would eliminate the human race. And what about the animals? They are just as bad as the people. Alligators, sharks, poisonous snakes, lions and tigers. Killers. Killers all. Almost every species of animal in this demonstration thrives by killing off other species. A world of trees and flowers, and no people or animals, would be a far better place than a world of wars and killing. This concludes my part of the classroom demonstration. I recommend that Joriel should immediately terminate this experiment by destroying it. Thank you, my android friend, for the demonstration and for your recommendation. And that is the next part of my demonstration. I am indeed going to destroy this miniature today in this classroom. Observe the sink next to the professor's desk. I shall now turn on the water. Next, I am going to flood the planet with the water and drown every creature on it, man and beast. And that will be the end of my little science project that I call Planet Earth. There. It is done. I have washed them down the drain. All the people and all the animals will die and their bodies will be washed into the ocean. Rain! Rain! It has rained non-stop for more than a month. Everything is flooded. Huge waves of water are washing away whole cities. The planet is doomed. My dear Nama, I do believe that the whole of Earth is going to be flooded, but we have my boat. It's finished now. I've been building it for years so that we could live on the sea. And now we have no choice but to live on the sea. I'll run over to our son's houses and get them and their families and bring them to the boat. While I am doing that, you gather up all our pets and the farm animals. I'll get back here as quickly as I can. Okay, Noah. I'll do it. I cursed you for building that ark, but now, it looks like it is going to save our lives. God bless you, Noah. And so ends our little play on short story theater, that we call, My Science Project, Planet Earth. I suspect that there may be a few people who doubt this tale, who do not believe that it is a true story of the creation of planet Earth. Well, doubters, all you have to do, is check any copy of the Bible. The story is there, for all to read. Of how Noah, built a large ship, and took his family and friends, and a wide variety of household pets, and other animals. Ah. According to the Bible, every man, woman, child, and animal alive today, is descended from Noah. Noah, who was created as part of a science project for a science class, on a far away planet. Well, whether you are a believer, or a non-believer, that's it for today, for short story theater. Speaking for Bill Russo, who wrote and directed today's play, this is Basil Nightingale saying, thanks for being with us and come back again real soon. Won't you?